All right, well, today we are in Lancaster and we are at the Salvation Army. So I'm excited. I haven't been here in a while. The last time we were here, the music was a touch loud. Um, so in this video, we may have to do a voiceover. I'm um, just letting you know ahead of time. But we're going to head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. So here we go. Okay, so right in the door, we've got some art glass and I'm showing you here that there's a serious quality difference between this made in China piece and what we found recently when we spotted the Murano at the antique mall. Um, these right here are polished stone eggs. They can be worth good money. I do not know the difference between the ones that are worth good money and the ones that are not. So I looked them over. They're not screaming at me like they're anything special and I decide that I'm leaving those behind. All right, so I grabbed this little chick because it looks to be gobel. There's no markings on it, but it really has that quality. This decorative plate I thought could maybe be Pearpoint of Massachusetts, but it's not. So I stick it back up on the shelf and keep going. The little chick goes in the cart. I like the color of this picture. Uh, unfortunately, it's got modern markings on the bottom, so I pass on that. Plates are pretty. I grabbed this because I thought it was quality. And sure enough, it is marked in the back, Wendell August Forge. It is what I have been looking for all this time. Now it is marked 1989. I don't know how that's significant to anyone, but <laughs> it really doesn't matter. And then I see the price is 4.99 and I, start hemming and hawing, but you know what? It's the principle and it's the fact that I finally found a Wendell August Forge in the wild, so I decide to buy it anyway. Now this piece caught my eye. Of course, you guys know I love glass, but hey, look at that price. <laughs> so I kind of look it over and try to convince myself that it's worth paying $20, but it's just not happening. I can't justify paying $20 for that, um, even for myself. It's just not that outstanding of a piece. So I pass on that and I grab this thinking it's Lennox. I just, it is Lennox. And uh, this piece right here is cute, but not really our style. This poor guy lost his beak and I felt really sorry for him. So I pointed him out to all of you so we could feel sorry together. Now this piece was interesting. It's an advertising piece for SKF, which is a company in Sweden, which produces bearings. I didn't know that at the time. I know that now, but I just thought it was interesting and I knew it was advertising. I figured why not? I like the cookie jar. However, it is quite heavy and I decide I don't want heavy things right now. So I pass on that. And then I left this giant heavy pottery basket and I decided I don't want that either. This thing is modern. This little guy still had salt in him and it spilled all over my finger. This I thought looked really nice and then I turned it over and it had modern markings on it. So I decided to pass on that. Now there's another egg and I considered putting it back with the others, but I didn't. Like, should I go back? No, I'm not gonna do it this time. <laughs> Mostly because the music was so loud and I just, I wasn't having it and I wasn't in a good mood. Yes, that's a bell, but I'm not playing the clip. Hey, look, this is exciting. This is a McCoy barrel mug. It's early McCoy, probably 1920s. Super stoked about that. I got really excited about that. These are the Revere Pewter mugs, I believe. I'm having a hard time reading that. I think they are Revere Pewter. Uh, they sell for okay money. Uh, I sometimes pick them up, sometimes I leave them behind. Today I left them behind. Oh, I'm picking something up. 
So then I notice these plates over here, they are the sandwich pattern of Tierra Glass. However, they are the plum color and the plum color was produced by Home Interiors in the 1990s and it is the least desirable of the colors, but I decide to grab them anyway. And then, oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> um, my mom really liked the bowl I picked up for her the other day. So what are the chances that we find a giant plate to go with it? Pretty slim, but we did it. Now I found this console bowl. I believe this is Indiana glass. These do not sell for very much. Um, and they especially, I, I can't see what they had on there. I remember it was pretty high. Um, they just don't sell for very much, especially in melt glass. So I leave those behind. These plates were really nice. And I looked at the back, Johnson Brothers England, you know, that's pretty good but they wanted $4.99 a piece for them and I honestly I couldn't justify that without knowing how much they're worth and I don't always look up comps while I'm in the store I just kind of go with my gut I'm gonna feel really stupid if they're worth like amazing money that um that maker didn't really appeal to me I didn't recognize it and so I decided to leave that behind. Now at this moment, there was a woman behind me who asked me about her shirt, if it fits right, because she's trying on things. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And she happens to tell me that everything is half off today, which changes my tune completely. And I become a lot less picky about the things I'm grabbing. Um, this piece right here, I not really interested in but these I'm talking to her as I'm shopping um these are really cool I like these a lot they have this applied ivy design on them and I'm digging them there's just two plates I'm sorry dishes I don't know they're kind of curved um and we've got this giant platter and they all match there's like no chips or cracks on them I really like them, so I decided to take those with me. Walter's gonna have fun with those. Those were interesting, but I don't really want brass wall fixtures. Um, those make nice noises when you hang them, wind chimes, that's the word I'm looking for. So I grabbed those because they look like seagulls and seagulls are very mid-century and people like seagulls. This, I like, I like the glaze. It's marked USA on the bottom and it, it's a leaf. So it goes in the cart. And then I check the price to make sure that it's not overpriced. <laughs> Checking the bottom again to see if anything is Wendell August Forge. We pretty much got the only piece, so. That looks modern. This piece is really nice. It is unmarked. I suspect it could be McCoy, not positive, but I like the glazing on it. This is really nice. This is a Lotus planter. Um, it is marked Kamark. Uh, we recently had a cat pitcher that sold really well by Kamark. Those usually, those planters, the Lotus ones, typically sell for 15 to 30. So I grabbed that. That piece was interesting. I'm checking the stoneware over to see if I recognize any of the markings. There was no marking on that one. I'm checking if those are crystal. So I'm flicking them and nothing is happening. <laughs> it's just a thud. So not really interested in those. Little dish, creamer sugar, obviously modern. This is neat, but again, we're just really not into the modern stuff. That's kind of a cute little paperweight, but I'm just not sure about it. 
checking out some of the back marks on the plates. Most of them appear to be modern. This little guy is really cute, but unfortunately he's all by himself. He doesn't have a friend, and so I decide to leave him behind. So this pattern down here is the cherry blossom pattern. I have bought and sold this before, like a long time ago. It was worth money back then. I don't think that it's worth as much now. Uh, these I, I thought were interesting. Um, Sydney, such and such. I've never seen them before. I decide that I'm going to grab them and at least stick them in my cart so that I can grab some quick comps on them. They end up not being worth much at all, and so they do end up making their way back onto the shelf. I'm here, I'm checking out mugs. That one, the handle and the rim reminded me of M.A. Hadley, so I picked that one out of the sea of mugs, um, but obviously it wasn't anything special. These ones looked like they could have some age, but modern markings on the bottom, so they stayed behind. I grabbed this because it is art glass, but there's really nothing special about it. There's no markings on it, so I leave that behind. The little olive plates are cute, but they're probably modern. So I grabbed these plates on a hunch that they could be Homer Laughlin, based off of the fact that last week at Goodwill, we found some Harlequin pieces that were Homer Laughlin, but they weren't marked. Uh, so I grabbed these pieces, however, I have not been able to find any similar plates of this design by Homer Laughlin. So I don't know who made these plates, but I did like them. They were half off, so they were 50 cents each. I like the abstract design on this. There are no markings on it, so it stayed. Now this little angel was, I thought, pretty cute. I don't normally pick up angels, but this one I just, I liked for some reason. It was 50 cents, so I couldn't say no. I decided to grab it. These plates, I figured they were modern, but I just had to check just to make sure, and sure enough, they are. I believe they were probably made to look like Fiesta Ware. Um, there's a lot of modern plates that were made to look like Fiesta Ware. This little guy was adorable. He's got a little feather tail. So he, of course, ends up in the cart. Now I kind of move on to the frames and the wood, which is against the wall. As you can see, it's really cluttered. I love the clutter personally. I love digging through it because there's always something hiding, uh, but it could be a little overwhelming to some. Now I spot this set on the shelf and the eagle is actually what draws me in. I didn't realize it at the time, but the eagle is the coat of arms for Poland. So this piece is hand carved, it's wood turned, and there's a whole set. Of course, I throw one of the pieces on the ground. I picked it up, it's fine, nothing's broken. Um, now when, when I figured out that this was the Poland coat of arms, I did offer it to Andrew because he is Polish. Um, however, he wasn't interested in it, and so I did list it up on eBay, but I just, you know, I feel like that was probably my favorite piece of that whole trip to Salvation Army, just because it was so unique, and it's probably one of a kind, uh, but it was just neat. So this doll was okay. Um, she was interesting, but nothing special. She stayed there. Again, we've got some carved wood, so I checked that out. 
I'm not really a fan of the tile in the middle. I mean, I like the carved wood. It's probably from Mexico, um, but the tile just, it wasn't jiving, so it stayed behind. This is really colorful and really neat, uh, but I, it was really light and I didn't like the weight of it, so I left that behind. I was just checking that out. I didn't really know what to expect. Blue's Clues. So now I'm checking out the artwork. You guys know I love artwork and I love to look at the artwork. I've had really good luck with artwork. Uh, that back there is not an original, otherwise I would have grabbed it because it's fantastic. But there really is not a whole lot here. Pull out a few pieces. I liked this one and it is signed, but I did not think it was an original, so I left it. Warrior Princess. It was a hard pass. Uh, here we've got the clear glass. I always look at the clear glass because you never know when you're going to find the EAPG. You guys know I'm not a super fan of EAPG, but if the piece is phenomenal, I will not leave it behind. And so I always check the clear glass. Uh, right there, that is a home coat fairy light. They sell between eight and $12, not a whole lot of money. That's why it got left behind. And the purses, gotta check the purses. As I say in every video, I am not looking for any designer bags. Typically when you find designer bags at the thrift stores, they are knockoffs. So if you find a Louis Vuitton on the racks, do not get overly excited. It's probably not real. I am looking for vintage bags. I am looking for fun bags and funky and things that are unique. That's what I look for when I'm looking at bags. I liked this. It looked like it could be vintage, but I really wasn't sure. Um, I know they, they remake a lot of these for like Forever 21 and those sorts of things. So just wasn't sure. So I'm kind of overthinking my Wendell August Forge and I decided to look up comps. Um, it doesn't look like it sells very well, so I talk about possibly putting it back on the shelf, but I forget to put it back on the shelf, so um, it ends up coming home with me anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But it doesn't look like it sells for very well, so that might have been an oopsie. All right, so I feel like we did amazing in there. As soon as I figured it out, it was half off. It was like game on. Um, we did really well. The staff was super friendly. It's always the ultimate test when you go up to the front with a cart full of breakables and they ask if you would like it wrapped and you say yes. And then it's like, what is their reaction going to be? So um, no, they passed the test. It was wonderful. They were really friendly. Uh, so it was a good experience. We'll definitely be back. Um, we got some good stuff. I'm pretty pleased. Um, I could tell that they're they're working really hard to get stuff back out on the shelves because I'm sure they have a ton of donations. But anyway, uh, we're going to get going. I'm going to get heading home. But um, I need to remind you guys that we are running a limited time shirt campaign through bonfire.com. So it is these shirts right here. It is the Banana Box Antiques shirts. Um, as you guys know, we are going to be opening a shop. And even though we have not decided on an opening date yet, sometime this year, uh, we have decided on a name and the name is Banana Box Antiques. So we are running a merch campaign for Banana Box Antiques. We got the shirts all made. Uh, you can go online and you can order your shirt at bonfire.com. I put a link directly to the campaign down in the description so you can go check that out. Um, but it's only for a limited time. So the date down here I'm gonna put is when the campaign ends. So after that date, you can no longer order a shirt. That is when it ends. Um, and that's when they ship out all the orders. So if you order your shirt now, today, it won't be shipped out until the campaign ends. So that is important to note. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you later. Bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.